Here at Virtual Field, we want you to get great test results. We've seen a lot of tests over the years and have compiled what we've learned into the five do's and five don'ts of virtual field testing. Everything covered in this video can be found in the testing section of our user manual. You can find a link to it in the description of this video on YouTube or in the help section of your account. Number one, do position the headset well. By far the most common cause of problems during testing is headset positioning. If the headset is positioned too high or too low, it can impact test results by causing a general depression or rim defects. We have a dedicated video for headset positioning, so check that out for more details. Number two, don't let the device fog up. Much like with a patient's glasses, face masks will fog the virtual field instrument if not secured properly. The device might also fog up if patients are too hot in your office. A foggy screen will cause a general depression on the test results. Sometimes it will also affect the second eye more than the first because the fog builds up over time. To address this, consider taking the face mask off if your patients are vaccinated and keep the AC or a fan on so patients aren't hot and sweaty in your office. If your patient must wear a mask, check out our other video on how to seal the top of the mask to keep the device from fogging up. Number three, do use the bolt strategy. The bolt strategy is our fastest thresholding algorithm and is reimbursed with CPT code 92083. If you're used to using the CETA strategy on Zeiss instruments or the top strategy on hog stripe machines, then Bolt will be familiar. Your test results will take as few as two and a half minutes per eye and your patients will be in and out before you know it. Number four, don't use the device in a bright room. While the virtual field headset does a good job of keeping out ambient light in the room, some light can still leak in through the side or nose areas. Make sure to dim the lights when you're testing so your patients can see the screen as clearly as possible. Number five, do insert trial lenses. We know that virtual field seems futuristic, but it still requires trial lenses, so don't forget them. Before the test starts, insert sphere and cylinder lenses that match your patient's distance prescription. There is no additional ad for power in presbiotic patients, so you don't need to make any adjustments to the distance prescription before putting it into the headset. Number six, don't use a spherical equivalent for a cylinder over two. We recommend using separate sphere and cylinder lenses when testing. If you want to use a spherical equivalent instead, that's fine, but make sure not to use a spherical equivalent when the cylinder is more than two diopters. The spherical equivalent formula doesn't compensate well for a high sill, and it can mess with your test results. Number seven, do clean the headset lenses. Over time, the headset lenses can get dirty. Make sure to wipe them down in between tests with the microfiber cloth. Once a week, apply a small amount of 70% isopropyl alcohol to the microfiber cloth and wipe the lenses down thoroughly. Keep in mind that if the lenses get too dirty, it will affect your test results. Number eight, don't compare absolute threshold values with another visual field machine. While you should certainly compare your virtual field results to Humphrey or other devices when you migrate patients across platforms, make sure you're looking at the right numbers. The absolute threshold value in the top left graph are scaled differently between different companies, so you should always compare total and pattern deviation graphs to check for changes in the patient's vision. Number nine, do make sure that your patient is trained. Visual field testing has a learning curve, and a new patient may not get their best results on the first exam. When testing an inexperienced patient, consider letting them run a practice exam in one eye, or try restarting their exam one or two minutes after starting once they get a hang of it. And finally, number 10, don't forget to monitor your patient's error rates during the exam. If their false negative rate goes up, it means they may be falling asleep. If their false positive rate goes up, remind them to only click when they see a light flash. And if their fixation loss rate goes up, make sure that they are looking at the orange fixation dot. Well-trained patients produce high quality results. Thanks for watching. If you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to contact our support team. Best of luck as you get to know your device. Over the past five years, Virtual Field has become known as the gold standard for virtual visual field testing. This year, we're pushing the boundaries even further with the VF3 Pro. 
Move from fast to faster with built-in eye tracking during threshold exams. False negatives and fixation losses are eliminated, and your team can even monitor the patient's eyes in real time. The VF3 Pro also includes a pupillometer to screen for relative afferent pupillary defects. The pupillometer automates a swinging flashlight test and takes less than one minute to screen for optic nerve abnormalities before dilation. This patient who had a clear relative afferent pupillary defect was later found to have asymmetric glaucoma. The VF3 Pro is fully integrated with Virtual Field's HIPAA-compliant platform. You can generate progression analysis reports on the VF3 and the VF3 Pro without rebaselining your patients. Start testing faster by upgrading your practice with Virtual Field. Visit our website at virtualfield.io for more information.